Hello, I'm Dr. Riley, and today we're going to discuss the vertebrae. How can you differentiate between the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae if they were all here on a table? How do you know one from the other? We will also go over some of the major bone markings. We start in the cervical spine where we have seven cervical vertebrae numbered C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. C7 is very frequently the vertebral promenons or has the longest spinous process, which is the one that you would feel on the back of your neck. Sometimes it is T1. T1 is number one of the thoracic spine where we have 12. And why would we have 12? Well, to match the 12 pair of ribs. Further down, we come to the lumbar spine where there are five, one, two, three, four, five lumbar spine. And below, we have the sacrum and the tailbone, also known as the coccyx. The first two bones of the cervical spine are very different and have different names. The first bone is called the atlas. Just like Charles Atlas held up the world, the atlas holds up your head. A cranium will fit right on top and be able to move in this direction because of these superior articulating facets. In this case, an articulation is simply a joint. So whenever you see an articulating facet, you are just talking about where the joint is touching. So this would be the inferior articulating facets and the superior articulating facets. All cervical vertebrae also have a transverse process. The transverse process being this side in the transverse direction protuberances. In the cervical spine only, you will also have a hole in your transverse process with which the vertebral artery passes. The atlas sits on top of another unusual bone called the axis. Whereas the atlas holds up the head, the axis helps us to rotate in this direction. This here is called the dens. It is called the dens and it is the only bone in the vertebral column that has one. It again has superior articulating facets. A vertebral foramen, a foramen is a hole. It has a foramen where the spinal cord goes through. It has a spinous process, a lamina. And once again, it has holes on the side. Moving further down to the other cervical vertebrae, we find that they are all small. They have small bodies. Why would cervical spine have small bodies? Well, if you think about it, you would not be able to move your head very much if they were big. The cervical spine, again, has holes in their transverse process. They have a spinous process. They have superior articulating facets, inferior articulating facet, a body, a lamina, and the pedicle, the pedicle comes off of the body. I'll show you that on a bigger, on a bigger piece. Then we come to the thoracic spine. The thoracic spine, again, has 12 vertebrae, which corresponds to the ribs. What makes these different is that the spinous process is headed in the downward position. Well, why would we have downward spinuses? Well, if they were out like this, you would look like a dinosaur. So if they were on a table, I can find the downward facing spinous and know now I am in the thoracic region. Again, we have a vertebral foramen or hole. 
We have two transverse processes. We have the body. We have a pedicle coming right off of the body. Here are the superior articulating facets and the inferior articulating facets. Moving further down, we have our largest vertebrae, and that makes sense because it holds up all the weight. Five lumbar vertebrae with a very big body, vertebral foramen, spinous process, superior articulating facets, inferior articulating facets. Again, it's that flat area that articulates with the next bone transverse processes. Let's take another look at the articulating facets of the lumbar vertebrae and you can see right here this one's inferior articulating facet along with this vertebrae's superior articulating facet. Next we will take a look closer at some of the bone markings.